All right, let's say I have a specific task I want to repeat over and over and over. In this case, I'm showing an example here where I'm going to drive forward where ports A and B are the motor. So drive forward an unspecified amount of time, but I'm going to drive forward until my light sensor sees a dark spot on the ground. Uh, so I define dark as something less than 25. And then once it sees that dark spot, it's going to back up, but this time it's going to back up for exactly 10 seconds. So drive forward until it sees dark, and then back up for exactly 10 seconds. So let's say I want to repeat this over and over and over. How would I do that? Well, that's the loop. So let's go here, show you a loop. So I'm going to pin this down. I'm going to go structures. I'm going to grab the while loop, and I'm going to draw a box around all the things I want to repeat. So there's my box. The loop's going to appear. Now this gray box is the loop, and everything inside this loop's going to repeat. This little eye in the corner is the iteration. It's going to tell you how many times the loop has iterated, if, if you want to do, if you want to use that. But that, that's available. You don't have to use it. This is, is needed. This is called the, the termination, the loop condition. So it's going to tell us when do we want the loop to stop. And for many cases in Legos, we'll go ahead and do what CS8 uh, is. We'll create a constant. We'll create an infinite loop. So this is saying, if I right-click on it, it says, stop if true. So this loop's going to keep continuing, and it'll stop every time the loop executes. It does all these four icons, and it checks the loop conditions. It says, if it's true, stop. And of course, I've wired to it a false constant, which means it's never true. means it's never going to stop, and this thing will loop forever. And the only way to get this to stop looping is to basically press the cancel button on the NXT. So I've actually created an infinite loop, which computer programmers hate, uh, but it's really not that bad. It's not the end of the world. And so that's basically a, a loop condition. Now, I could do all kinds of other loop conditions. I don't do a constant, for example. Maybe I'll make this a little bit bigger. And let's say I wanted to go in and make this loop uh, go until a touch sensor is pressed. So I can go here now. It says, is the touch sensor pressed? Yes or no. That's also a green Boolean, yes or no. So now it'll execute these four icons. And it'll check, is the touch sensor pressed? If the touch sensor is pressed, you get a, a true. And if it's not pressed, you get a false. So if the touch sensor is pressed, you get a true. And of course, we have stop if true. So this will execute as long as the touch sensor is not pressed. As soon as I press this, press the touch sensor, you generate true, and the loop will stop executing. And so you can do it with lots of different things, uh, but that's the basic functionality of a loop.